Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. As perhaps many of you heard of what happened yesterday afternoon. Correct? Our brother Muhammad Saleh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his mercy. Our wonderful brother, right before Maghrib, on his motorcycle, driving, and he gets into an accident, and he returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept him as a martyr. Amir Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah grant his family patience. There is a lot that can be said. Agreed? So many things that can be said. We pray for him and for his family, but something for all of us to take note of, this may be our last Ramadan. Agreed? We're not trying to be fancy in the words and eloquent. No, literally speaking, this might be the last lecture you ever attend. This might be the last day of your life. This might be the last day you ever fast. So work very hard, work very well, as much as you possibly can, because you never know when your life comes to an end. Not just that, just today, this morning, someone gave me a very interesting reflection. Allah says in the Quran, that people do not know in which land what you die. You do not know which land that you die in. Not just what time, what day. You don't even know where. You might be living all your life in Dearborn, but you end up dying in Kentucky, right? Or Pennsylvania. And you don't know what land. And where did our brother land? On top of a restaurant. May Allah have rahmah upon him. This is very, very uh, important point for all of us. And may Allah reward him for this reminder. Amin Rabbil Alameen. If he were to be told that your death will be on top of a Delhi restaurant, it wouldn't even make sense. It wouldn't even make sense. Why would I end up on a building? Why would I even do there? But subhan, that was the place where the time is. I don't know where's my place. I travel every now and then. I might be ending in the airplane. Some of you may be in somewhere else. So you never know. So don't take things for granted. Those who close their doors, their bedroom doors, on their phones or on their laptop, watching what they're watching, thinking that they will never die in their bedroom. Who said that? Yeah, right or wrong? Who said that? You want the last thing that you watch be something which you'll be resurrected upon. May Allah forgive us. And may Allah make the, the land that we die in, may Allah make the time that we die in, and the state that we die in very positive. Ya Rabbil Alameen. All right, Bismillah. With that being said, I have a quick question. Help me out. And this session, I need you so much to help me. And I say it every time. So for those that may be new, I take and I get and I feed myself off of your energy. It does not break my fast, <laughs> alhamdulillah. But I take from your energy, inshallah. So feel free to answer as many as you possibly can of the questions I will ask. What is the longest time you waited in line for something and that you wanted? And you knew it was going to be long. You knew it was going to take long. But you're like, it's worth it. I'm going to stay. Give me, give me uh, an example. Go ahead, let me see. Um, waiting for a water slide. Excellent example. How long? Almost an hour. Almost an hour, right? And how long is a slide? Right? It's, it's probably less than two minutes, right? But you were willing to wait for almost one hour. Maryam Hakim. ICD E drive. So we have another complaint. ICD. <laughs> okay. Two hours long. Two hours long. What did you get? Uh, a balloon. A balloon. <laughs> right? Excellent. Go ahead. Uh, new ride in Cedar Point. Two hours and 15 minutes. How long was the ride? Like, well, like a minute. About a minute. Sah? So two hours is 120 minutes plus 15, 135 minutes for one minute. Was it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, La, astaghfirullah, watch out. I was like, yeah. Ahsan. All right, may Allah bless you. Any Chick-fil-A people? <laughs> right? Go ahead. What is it? Dave's Hot Chicken. How long? Okay, bismillah. How, uh, was it worth it? Oh, <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Now we're in 30 minutes. Okay, last one. For candles, was it worth it? And you end up burning them, subhanAllah. <laughs> for candles, right, excellent. May Allah bless you, excellent. Fine. What would you say about someone who's not willing to spend a few hours to gain 83 years? Sah? 
Oh, I can't do this. One night. Wait one night. Work for one night. And what you will get in return is 30,000 nights worth of work. Is that not worth it? Is that not a good deal? So let's talk about this, inshallah. We are going to talk about Surah Al-Qadr. And we're going to break it down, inshallah. May Allah bless us all, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Quick question. How many chapters are in the Quran? How many surahs? Go ahead. A surah. How many surahs or chapters? Take a shot. How many? Try. 114. Excellent. Surah Al-Qadr. It's which number? And I'll get more advanced. You're like, oh, 114, I knew that. Like, what's Surah Al-Qadr? What surah number is it? It's 97. 97. How many verses are they in that surah? How many verses? No, read it. <laughs> right? How many, Maria? Five. Five. Ahsanti. Right. Okay. Where was it revealed? Mecca or Medina? When the Prophet was in Mecca or when the Prophet was in Medina? Go ahead. Mecca, excellent. So, so there's differences of opinion, but many of the most common responses that you'll hear is that it was revealed in Mecca and one of the earlier chapters, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. You guys ready, inshallah? Five verses, let's talk more about them. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna anzalnahu. Inna anzalnahu. We have sent it down. Inna, what does it mean? What does inna mean? We. Oh, who's we? Who's we? Us. Okay, who's we? Allah. Allah. Allah is we. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna, that's the royal we. Right? You have to watch out, guys, when you do stuff like that. So, uh, a mom and dad, we thought about this, and it was just you. <laughs> right? You know, uh, we plan to go to the school, and it's just you. صح? It's an I. So, uh, try, sometimes you have to avoid the royal we. And a president does it sometimes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna. And just to note something in the Quran that is very interesting. When the verses in general have to talk about the oneness of Allah, Allah usually does not say we. Inni, ana, I, I, I. SubhanAllah, just to go along with the meaning of the ayat. So here the royal we, there's something grand that is about to be mentioned. And it was mentioned. What is it? We what? Inna anzalnahu. We sent it down. Does the verse tell you what is it? Does, it, does the Quran tell you? Does it tell you? In the Anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Okay, what did Allah send down? Did Allah say it? Allah said we sent it down. This is the first verse. What, what's strange? Any English teachers in the crowd? The teacher says, What do you have for lunch? I ate it. The, what's it? Right? What's the it for every kid? It's mac and cheese. You have to remember. Right? What's the it here? Go ahead. The Quran, Allah barik feek. That's the Quran, inna anzalna, we sent it, i.e. the Quran. Why did Allah not mention it? Because something so grand, so majestic, I don't need to tell you what it is, because that's the best it that can ever come down. There's nothing that Allah can send down onto earth greater than the Quran. If there is, Allah would have specified, inna anzalna al-Qur'ana fi laylat al-Qadr. You see how powerful, we didn't even start yet. Inna anzalna, we sent it down. Oh, if I, if I say, if someone says, oh, he came. I didn't even say his name. If I say he came, everybody will like, who is he that came without I mentioning his name? All of us should know who it is, right? So to the Muslimin, inna anzalna, we sent it down, meaning it's the Quran. It's the greatest thing that Allah has ever sent down. Time. Next, inna anzalna, continue. Fi layla, I didn't see al qadr yet. Fi layla. Oh, you're going to go really deep there. Just a little bit, not too much. Fi layla. We sent it down at night. Tayyib, we all agree it's the Quran. Then Allah says at night. Does Allah say a word in the Quran that is not meaningful? Impossible. Every word has a meaning. So the Quran was sent during the day or during the night? That means there's a strong connection between the night and Quran. You see that? There's a strong connection between the night and Quran. So reading Quran at night is not like reading Quran in the day. We have proof for that? Yes. Very famous, very well-known ayah in the Quran from Surah Al-Muzzammil. Inna nashi'ata layli hiya. Continue. Inna nashi'ata layli hiya. Ashaddu wata'an wa aqwa muqila. Allah says in the Quran that worshipping Allah at night is more impactful. Ashaddu wata'an fi muwafaqa bayna al-qalbi wal-lisan. 
Ashaddu wat'an wa aqwa muqila and suitable for recitation. It's the perfect time to have the Quran impact you the most. Allahu Akbar. Another hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that fasting, as siyam wal Quran yashfa'an. Fasting and reading Quran hooks you up on the day of judgment. Imagine someone, may Allah protect you, is deserving of punishment, iqab, because he did this and he did that. And all of a sudden, as you're about to be dragged to, let's say, hell, Quran comes. Quran, Quran is not a guy. Yeah, but Quran comes in a form of that is tangible. In any way Allah sees best and says, Ya Allah, not him, not her. Ya Allah, please. Why? The Quran says, Inni mana'atuhu annawma bilayl. I stopped them from sleeping a full night because that's the time they used to read the Quran. So the Quran will help you, but the Quran at night will help you even more. Allahu Akbar. Right? I stopped them from sleeping at the night. But what about fasting? They stopped you from eating and drinking, so they will help you on that day. Will Allah accept? Yes, Allah, the Prophet says, فَيَشْفَعَان. Last hadith about reading Quran at night. Very beautiful hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man qama bi ashri ayat. Whoever after Isha, before Fajr, you're able to pray and you recite 10 ayat. Any 10 ayat from the Quran, lam yuktab min al ghafilin. You will not be classified as someone who's heedless, someone who does not care about Allah. You will not be titled this. 10 ayat. Can we do that inshallah? 10 ayat. Al Fatiha. And qul huwa Allahu ahad. You sealed the deal. One raka'ah. The Prophet says, pray even one raka'ah before you sleep. Fantastic. Now, what if you read more? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَنْ قَامَ بِمِئَةِ آيَةٍ Now, if you recite not ten, one hundred, كُتِبَ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ You'll be now certified by Allah as those who love Allah, respect Allah, and are those who continuously return back to Allah. May Allah grant us that certification. But there's one last one. And who stands up at night and does not read 10 or 100, but how many? 1,000. There's 1,000 ayat. Did you ever uh, go to a store, Costco, for example, it says basic membership executive. Delta Airlines, you have the bronze, and you have the silver, you have the gold, you have the platinum, you have the diamond, and you're like, man, I wish I'd get diamond. There's a diamond membership with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? In a way, as Allah Rasulullah explains it, and whoever prays, Alfi Aya Kutiba min al Muqantarin, it will be classified to them that they'll be have reward as Qantar. Al Qantar, Al Qantar, Al Qantar, Al Qantar is a magnificent amount of reward. Only Allah knows its value. It's a number only Allah can classify exactly. Mountain and mountain of good deeds. May Allah grant it to all of us, Ya Rabb. Right, now we go to the word that many of us are waiting for. Inna anzalnahu fi layla. Which layla? Laylat al Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we sent it down on the night of Qadr. What does al Qadr mean to you? Raise your hand. What does al Qadr mean to you? Go ahead. Night of power. People say the night of power, right? What else? Go ahead, Maryam. Calculation. Uh, qadr, calculation. Excellent. Discreet, specific. Okay, excellent. Go ahead. When, when the Quran was sent, accent, qadr, fate or decree. Last one. Ahsan, decree or destiny. May Allah bless you. So there's a lot of meanings, right? I'll share with you too, inshallah. Al Qadr, the very famous one, and many discuss that that's what it means, is the night of glory. Al Qadr, value. This is the night that is very valuable. So this man is very valuable to the other person. Qadruhu Ali, wa sha'anhu Ali. So this is one of the meanings of Layt al-Qadr. So Allah says we sent it down on a seriously valuable night. So why is that night valuable? Because Allah sent the Quran. Excellent. Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr. One of the mashayikh says, and why would it not be valuable? When the Quran is valuable, sent down on a valuable month, which is? Sent by a valuable angel, which is? Sent down onto a valuable human being, which is? Sent down on an ummah that is very valuable, which is the ummah of Muhammad. So value upon value, up, sent by Allah uh, in Ramadan, the speech of Allah through Jibreel to Muhammad, to your wonderful nation. Allahu Akbar. So value upon value upon value upon value. 
The other meaning, the other meaning, Al-Qadr meaning decree and destiny. I will discuss this, but not now. You have to be patient with me, inshallah. The other meaning, decree and destiny, it's a night that shapes your future and destiny. Allah orders the angels to write down what will happen to you for the whole year until the next Laylatul Qadr, which we'll discuss that, inshallah. But one thing I want you to appreciate, Allah said we sent it down when? Laylatul Qadr. Now my question to you, did Allah send the whole Quran or one ayah or what's the deal? What did Allah send exactly from the Quran? What do you guys think? What do you guys know? Go ahead. He completed it. Ahsan, he sent out the whole, down the whole Quran, right? Complete. Anyone has another answer? What did Allah send on that night? One last shot. Now this one, Ahsanti, thank you, help me. First five ayat of Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. There's a difference. But why am I sharing this with you? It's a little bit technical sometimes, but there's something very profound I want you guys to know and appreciate. I know you know this, but I want you like, man, wow. Many of the scholars say, on this night, Allah revealed the entire Quran. The entire Quran, but not to the Prophet Sallallahu No scholar that I'm aware of, or in my reading, that says Allah sent the whole Quran to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no. But Allah sent the whole Quran from the preserved tablet, Al-Lawh al mahfuz down to the first heaven. Okay, so it went down from the Lawh al mahfuz preserved tablet, all the way to the first heaven. Then the Quran came verse by verse, chapter by chapter, depending on the story, depending on the events that took place. And the people, by the way, they criticized Allah and the Prophet for that. They said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who disbelieved, they said, لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا Why did God not do like other prophets? The whole tablets of Moses, just one shot, send it all down. Why wait and one bit but after a bit? Allah says, كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكُ وَرَتَّلْنَهُ تَرْتِيلًا Allah said, no, I intentionally did not send it all down to the Prophet. Why? So I can strengthen his heart. So I can make him stronger and stronger. But how can this make sense to us? Imagine, tonight, we have uh, how many nights left in Ramadan, roughly? Seven. seven, roughly, right? Seven nights left. Is that seven? I'm saying roughly, too. There's, there's one answer. I say roughly, just to be safe, right? So about seven nights left. If I tell you, tonight's iftar, I will give you the iftar of all seven nights. So t tonight's iftar, you have Hanif. Tomorrow's iftar, you have pizza, halal pepperoni. After tomorrow, you have sushi for iftar. So I'm not going to divide them for you. I'm going to give them all for you tonight. The younger people will say, yeah, <laughs> right? Excited. But in reality, is that a good decision? No, but I give you the exact thing I promised you, same quantity. But it will not impact you the same way had I divided for you. And Allah is the best of examples. Allah sends down the Quran based on the Prophet as a situation and the events surrounding him. What is one of the greatest benefits here? is that Allah already knew everything that was going to happen. See, that should bring you comfort. Allah ya'lam al-ghayb. Allah already knew about the conquest of Mecca. Allah already knew about al-ta'if and the Surah Yusuf being revealed. Allah already knew when the Prophet is going to pass away. Allah already knew the result of the Battle of Badr. Allah already knew that the Battle of Badr was not going to be a, an accident. It's something Allah planned. Allah knew exactly who will become Muslim. Allah knows about Zayd and Zainab. Allah knows about all of them. There's something to bring you so much comfort. Allahu Akbar. But Allah did not mandate it to happen. There's some will that Allah has given to the people. Fantastic. So other opinion, as the sister said, no, the first ayah was revealed on that night. Now, what's the next ayah? What's the next ayah? إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْتِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Allah says, and what do you know about Laylatul Al-Qadr? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ What does this tell you? And it, someone tells you, man, I watched this thing, and what a thing that I just watched. Like he's just emphasizing how great it is. Now many times, let's be very honest, I don't, don't take it personal. Sometimes we exaggerate things that are not worthy to be exaggerated, right? Bro, I ate at this restaurant. Wallah, bro, I almost thought it's from Jannah. Yeah, relax. You go to this restaurant and you're like, bro, this is not Jannah, it's the other place. <laughs> right? The people exaggerate sometimes. Oh, I saw this thing. Oh, you missed out. I cannot explain how great this lecture was. No, Adi, it's very regular, right? Subhanallah. But th there's two things here. 
Who is the one who's showing you how great it is, the night? Not a speaker, not an imam, not a parent. Who is it? Allah. That's one. So the one who's saying it's great is Allah. And the other thing is that you have to now look at the night in a completely different perspective. Allah said it's great, therefore it's for sure what? Great. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Now, this comes to show you something. Many people are good at poetry. Anyone here is good at poetry? No? Just a little bit? Half, halfway? Right. May Allah bless you. And may Allah grant you humbleness. You know, sometimes people uh, put in words that you have to Google them. Sah? Agreed? Like they say some nice words, like, man, I have to define this. When Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ It's like telling you there's nothing that can be said for you to understand how valuable it is. So all what Allah will tell you, and what do you know about this night? That's it. There's nothing that your mind can comprehend how great that night is. And Allah says in another surah, let me test you. There's three surahs in the Quran that I'm aware of that talk about Laytul Qadr. It might be more, but there's three that I'm aware of that talk about Laytul Qadr. What are the three surahs? Go ahead, give me one. Dukhan is one. Dukhan, what surah is this? Al Surah Al Qadr. And the last one? Raise your hands, okay. Remember, I told you, help me. Go ahead. Very close, very close. MashaAllah, Santi. Very close. Al Isra is when the Prophet he went to meet Allah. Excellent. Very close. Go ahead. Surah Al Baqarah. Right? So Al Baqarah, Al Dukhan, Al Qadr. Okay, now I want to go to another surah just for one ayah. Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. Al Qadr is in this surah. Allah said, We send down the Quran on a blessed night. Now, what does blessing mean? What's barakah mean? Like barakallah fiq. Now, please, anytime you make dua for someone, please know what it means, right? Barakallah fiq. Many times we say duas and we don't know what it means. Some people say, Should I say a dua from the Quran? Or should I make up something from my mind? Which one? What do you guys think? From your mind or from the Quran? What do you think? From your mind, sah? One of the main things here is the heart. Does your heart know and your mind know what is it that you're making? And you might be making a dua that you don't even know what it is and you're not connected to it in any way, shape or form. But your dua in English, that is slang, can get you to Allah closer. Right? So the connection of the mind and the heart is very critical. So when we say barakallahu feek, may Allah put baraka in you, what does it mean? Increase in goodness, as ziyada wa nama al khair. So let me give you an example of a hadith about baraka. Ready? So you guys are gonna apply this hadith, inshallah. Say inshallah. Some people may be uncomfortable, but once you know it's a hadith, you'll be comfortable. Ready? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ta'amu rajuli, a meal that was done for one man or one woman, a meal that was done for one man, yakfi rajulain, is enough for two men. A meal that was done for one person, is enough for who? For two people, but just eat together. So the Prophet is teaching us here that when you eat together as a family or as a group of people, there's more barakah in the food. So the food has a sufficiency for one person, but now there's barakah. There is what? Excess in goodness when? When? When you share it with others. SubhanAllah, this is deen. You're like, if I share, I'm not going to get my share. Right? And how many people hide things? All the people that hide the dessert after iftar, you think we don't know this stuff? Oh yeah, we know. The cabinets. Yeah, we know all the good stuff. The Nutella, and like hiding it and taking the uh, bueno or whatever, the kinder surprise and all the good stuff, right? Adults and youngsters, right? Hey, what are you doing there? Nothing. The one you share, there's only one left. What if I tell you that the one that was left, it would have tasted better if you shared it? Allah, there's barakah. The Prophet says, rajulain," And the food that is enough for two people, that was made for two people, will be enough for how many? Four. Allahu Akbar. Two people, that was the meal. It's two, two, two plates or whatever for two people, it will be enough for four. Four normal people. <laughs> right? May Allah bless us. And the food that was made for four people is enough for how many? Eight. So next time you go to where? Al-Amir or Al-Hamidu? Well, uh, Habib or whatever. Like, every name we, we say we should have a commission, صراحةً. any name, especially if it goes on YouTube, right? You say they're like, oh, mashallah, how many guys? Oh, you're eight. Okay, I have a platter for eight. La, platter for four. Why? Uh, and to Tamania, eight. La, platter for four. 
because the platter for four is enough for eight, inshallah. And don't call me if things get messed up after that. Fadahadna, <laughs> you embarrassed us in front of my guests, right? Wallah, honestly, just be very honest with yourself. When you have an invitation, you have a uzuma, right? Be very honest. How many times there was extra food? How many times there was more food that remained than what you ate? Right? Subhanallah. So be very careful and be very cautious. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Whether when I said this, many of you are like, oh. <laughs> so it's, it's real. It's a painful thing, right? It's very painful when you throw things away. And I, I'm not sure of the name of the group, but there is a group of uh, uh, local people in Dearborn that take untouched food. Let's say you have two trays of salads. Don't open both. Open one. Uh, serve the salad. The other platter is still untouched. It can be given to a group of people. You can search them up, Google them, inshallah. They take it and give it to people that are in need. So very wonderful initiative. May Allah reward them and accept from them. So this is an example of a barakah. Now, this whole thing to tell you this night is a night of barakah. But to what extent? Is it if I pray, it's like I prayed for a week? Is it if I worked for one hour, it's like I worked for a thousand hours? Let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now we go back to Surah Al-Qadr. Allah says, Laylatul Qadr. Oh, brother, you copy-pasted again. No, I didn't copy-paste again. How many times was this said so far? How many times? How many times was this said so far? Go ahead, Salah. Three times. Three times. Oh, you who says poetry. All right? Oh, you who knows really well about the language. Allah says, Inna anzal fi." All, all of us together. Inna anzalna fi wa ma adraka ma next. Inna, see, see that three times when Allah is saying it once, twice, thrice. This is serious. This is a very important matter. Allah is emphasizing this, and you too should emphasize that night. You too should work very, very hard. Work triple. Not should not be like any Ramadan. No, no, no. It should not be like any night in Ramadan. Whatever the Ramadan nights have passed is one thing. You know, before Ramadan, what we said? We said whatever you do in Ramadan has to be before, more than before Ramadan. I have, for example, I have one, uh, one of the children told me, I will read five pages every day. That's one child said, I will read five pages of the Quran every day. I asked that child, how many pages you used to read before Ramadan? They said five. I said, no way you read five in Ramadan. Wallahi, almost impossible. Even if you add half a page, just show Allah Ramadan is different. Fair enough? Now that's your effort in Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr, no. Don't do five and a half. You do six, you do 10, you do 15, as much as you possibly can. May Allah allow us to witness Laylatul Qadr. So Allah says Laylatul Qadr, emphasizing. What about it, ya Allah? Khayrun min alfi shahr. It is better than 1,000 months. We many times we say 1,000 months, which is unbelievable. How many years is that? I know many of you went across that. What do you think, how many years? Roughly. Th Go ahead. Yeah, you're close. I think you said it. Ahsant. Allah barik May Allah make you witness that night. It's, about, it's over 83 years. But I want to, I, wanna, I, don't, I feel bad for the days. The years are proud. You referenced me. The months are proud. You referenced me. What about the days? How many days? How many days? Is it too early for math? 30,000. 30, so one night is more. Is it yu'adil or khair? Equal or more, it's more. It's more valuable to Allah than how many days? 30,000 nights. So one night is more valuable than 30,000 nights. And the best is what Allah said. al fushah al fushah And subhanAllah, you can't put numbers. The calculator stopped working. خلاص. With Laylatul Qadr, you can say Alif, Lam, Mim, Alif is 10 good deeds. Lam, 10 good deeds. With Laylatul Qadr, calculator does not help. You get a Texas instrument, you go to Texas, it will not help you. Nothing will help you. No calculation will help you. Only Allah can help you. Laylatul Qadr. May Allah grant us the ability to stand up at that night. Say, I mean, Laylatul Qadr, Alf Shah, Subhanallah. How many of us? Ana, Subhanallah, this miskin here just came to my. I just remembered right now. When I used to be at college, I had an internship. And my internship, I used to work for a supplier known as NEMAC. They used to do the engine blocks for the Ford trucks, GM trucks. And I got a call one time that, are you available to work night shift? Just remember that, subhanAllah. And in night shift, do you get paid the same? How much more you get paid usually? Depending on the company, but it has to be more. So I got 10% more, okay? About 10% more. So I said, they said, yeah, you get paid. I'm like, bro, at night, it's like 10% more. I'm like, what? You get 10% 10, 10 more. If you make $8, we'll give you 8.80. I'm like, I'm, I'm down. 
for 10%. صح? 80 cents. طب, what if you're told, what if you're told that if you go to your job, what, how much you get paid a day? For example, let's say you get paid $200. Or well, let's say 100, just to make it simple. Let's say you get $100 a, a, a day, your shift, 100 per day. You are told if you come in tomorrow, we will not pay you 100. We will pay you how much? 3 million. Naam? Naam? I know it sounds crazy, but this is something we are desperate, we need people. So if you come in tomorrow, we will not give you $100, we will give you 3 million. Because add the two zeros to the 30,000. 3 million? Will you guys go? Huh? <laughs> Oh, yes, we definitely will go, right? Absolutely. The youngsters will go, the elders will go. Everyone, will, the retired will come back to work. Right? Everyone will go, everyone. People that, that, that struggle, people that are sick. Hey, carry me, bro. Okay, I'll carry you. What do you want me to work for? Three million. Right? It's unbelievable. I usually get $100 an hour or $100 a day. Now it's three million. Allah says, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ That is why... The Prophet وسلم, was very disturbed at who? He's very disturbed at those who hear everything I said and more, yet they're not excited. He's very disturbed. Like, what kind of heart do you have to read what Allah has said, to hear what the Prophet has said, and you're not willing to change your schedule whatsoever? And you have the capacity. The Prophet وسلم, he says, Atakum Ramadan. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ramadan has come. شهر مبارك. It's a blessed month. فرض الله عز وجل. Allah has obligated you to what? To fast. تفتح فيه أبواب السماء. On that month, in that month, the gates of heaven are opened. وتغلق فيه أبواب جهنم. And the doors of hell are closed. So you can't go to hell even if you want to. Okay? They're closed. And that's how much رحمة and blessing that month is. Then the Prophet says, وتغل فيه مردة الشياطين. And the devils, the evil devils, are chained and locked up. All this to tell you the following, the end. Fihi layla, the Prophet says, in this month, there is a night more valuable than how many months? Than a thousand months. And what does he say? Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. If you miss out, you have truly missed out, and there's nothing that can make up for it. When the Prophet uses such firm language, we have to all pay attention and respect that. If you miss out the Prophet, your Nabis, if you miss out, it's, it's pretty much done. When that night, maybe next Laylat al-Qadr, you can repent. But to ask, I want the same Laylat al-Qadr, la, rahat. You missed out. Many people use this term loosely, right? Oh, you missed out. How many times it happens in sport events? Someone's talking, touchdown. Oh, you missed out the touchdown. Ah, oh, man, are you angry? You're talking to me. I missed out on the touchdown. How did it? I don't want to watch a replay. And you're angry because of a touchdown. If we talk about Laylatul Qadr, the Prophet says, that's when you truly have missed out. May Allah protect us. You know, one of the scholars, he says, Maghboon, Maghboon, Maghboon. He is such a loss. Rahat alayk, you're a loss. Who? The one who's not willing to sell, to trade. Many people here do cryptocurrency, right? Bitcoin, whatever, right? Or other investments, or whatever you do in life. You trade things. Even you trade food sometimes, right? So he says, the one who's not willing to trade a few hours, for 83 years. You have a chance to make 83 years of worth of ibadah in one night and you don't take it serious. So work your schedule around. Yalla, have a nap. Maryam was saying a nap after Asr. Remember? Yalla, let's all, inshallah, after this lecture, for example, have a nice nap if you can. I don't know your schedules. Some people genuinely, they cannot. They work at hospitals, emergencies. May Allah bless you and reward you for your intentions. Intentions are critical. So then here we move on. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Where's my mouse? Oh, Zakallah. Thank you so much. Allah Allah Excellent. Thank you so much. See now everybody's attention is undivided, sah? Allah. I'll need drop it again. Every time. Alright. Zakallah. So Allah says on this night, Tanazdarul Malaika to Warruh. Allah sends down the angels and who? Who's a ruh? Jibreel alayhi salam. You know, you know Jibreel, you heard so much about Jibreel alayhi salam. He comes with the Quran. And, he, and people cried. When the Prophet died, people cried. Why? Not just because the Prophet ﷺ has died, but they cried because Jibreel will no longer come as often. So we have the chance, bi ta'ala, to witness the presence of Jibreel ﷺ on this very night. Tanazzalul Malaika. How many angels come down? 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna tilka layla, this night, the amount of angels that come all the way to this dunya, fill ard on earth. How many angels? He said, Akhtaru min adad al hasa, more than the number of pebbles on earth, more than the number of particles of sand on earth. How many, how many is that? There'll be more angels than human beings, more angel, angels than animals and human beings beings and jinn and all creation they'll be all over the place so if i ask you a question what benefit does it bring you and does it bring me the angels that come down do you wish that you can see the angels can you imagine the traffic <laughs> uh, angel right right but subhanallah it's from allah's rahmah that they don't take that volume right but you can feel their presence what benefit does it come to us when there's angels surrounding us? Give me anything that you can come to, come to your mind. What, how can angels help a human being in general? Let me oh, make it open. How can angels help out human beings? In what capacity? Give me one. Right, number one, there are witnesses. Witnesses. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that there are angels that come down at Asr prayers. And there's another shift of angels that come at Fajr prayers. So the one who prays Asr and prays Fajr, any group of angels that go back to Allah, Allah asks them, what did you see them doing? We came, they were praying, we left their praying. So they're witnesses and those who go to court, may Allah protect you from court, say Ameen. But one of the most important things in court system are witnesses. And the greatest court is the court of Allah. And on that court, you need every possible witness you can ever bring forth, yes or no? That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was talking to the brothers and the sisters, but he told, I think it was one of the sisters if I'm not mistaken, but the hadith says as the following. He says, when you do tasbih, use your fingers. He explicitly says, count here, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, why? فَإِنَّهُنَّ مُسْتَنْتِقَاتِ Because they will speak on the day of judgment. Can you imagine? They'll say, Ya Allah, they said tasbih, so they, everything that you want to witness, they'll come out. So the angels are going to witness, witness greatness, bi May Allah make your nights great, say Ameen. What else? Go ahead. Excellent, so the angels come specifically more than other places when you read what? Quran. What do we benefit when the angels come? Because when I say this, what happens? You will care about your surroundings. Did you guys ever, probably heard about this, there's like some uh, scouting that happens, if that's the right term, for college uh, uh, students who want to become athletes, right? They want to join the NFL, they want to join the NBA. So they start training in front of these people, watching them, correct? So when you perform very well, a guy goes back to the, the Detroit Lions and he says, you know what, this guy is special. So, what, what, so when you are going to work on Laytul Qadr, you want to you wanna perform. You want to impress, right? So the angels can document, he worked hard, she, she really struggled, oh my gosh, she, just a, she did this and she did that and she read and she taught and she was patient and so on and so forth. So witnesses, what else? The answer or help? Excellent, right? So I'll give you two of them. So number two, so number one, they're witnesses. Number two, anytime you make dua, that is good, what do the angels say? Ameen. Ya Allah. Uh, what does Ameen mean? See, I told you, never make dua unless you know what it means, right? So all these years you said Ameen. Uh, what does Ameen mean? Like, yes, accept yes, oh Allah accept. So Ameen is a dua. So Ameen itself is a dua. Ameen, and Allahumma taqabbal. Oh Allah accept. So you're making dua, oh Allah bless me, ya Allah protect me. And then an angel says Ameen. Ya Allah, please accept her dua, ya Rabb. How many of those angels? Miss one or two or three or four. Adad al hasa. You see that? So what else? What else does the angels do with your dua? Who can help me out? This is very. I'm gonna take my time. So we're gonna hook each other up in a way that you've never hooked up someone in your life. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we have two. Let's let, let's hear the one in the back. Then I'll take you first. Go ahead. Excellent. May Allah bless you and protect you. Ahsanti. I won't tell people what you said yet. Let me hear what she has to say. Go ahead, your turn. Okay. 
exact same thing. So they both, alhamdulillah, said the right answer. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whenever you make dua for a person, bi dhahri al ghayb, they don't know, they didn't hear you, you didn't put it on your story, I'm making dua to you, and you tag them. La, you don't tag no one, okay? You just make dua for them bi dhahri al ghayb, behind their back. The angel, I'm not saying it's wrong if you do that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good to tell people that you made dua for them. Who did that? The greatest human being after Muhammad Sallallahu Who did that? Who's the greatest man after the Prophet Ibrahim Ahsan Di Khalid. Ibrahim Ahsan made dua to who? For who? For his father. And he told his dad, سَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكَ رَبِّي إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِي حفي. He told his dad, I'll make dua for you. Some ulama, they said, you can tell someone, I'll pray for you, just so they can know that you love them. It's okay. But in this dua that I'm sharing with you, the hadith, whoever makes dua behind the back of a person, the angels say, Ameen, and وَلَكَ مِثْلُ And may you too get the same. So that's why if you heard many times in khutbah, jumma'ah, and imams, and khatibs, they say, it's for your own benefit, make dua for others. Like sometimes, if you want something, your chances of it happening are higher if you prayed that thing for the, another person. So let's say you really want money. So, Ya Allah, bless my neighbor with so much money. Ya Allah, make my neighbor the richest person in the neighborhood. And you, I mean, well, I can and you too, and you too, right? It's, it's a business, it's business. It's all business, but it's a good halal business, right? So the angels are a witness. The angels say ameen. The angels say and you too. One last one or two, there's a lot more. But let one last one. I think very important. Hmm. Go ahead. When you do salam to the Prophet and come into Allah, Oh, mashallah. Ahsanti, mashallah. Allah bless you. Whenever you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so the, the means of transportation to that speech, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are the angels. They send it to the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet's response is sent back to you, right? The angels are taking part in this. But one of the main things, obviously, the angels do is they actually don't say ameen. They don't say and you too. They make their own dua for you. And that's like khalas, like this is like almost peak, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that the ones who carry Allah's throne, يحملون العرش They make dua for the mu'mineen Oh Allah forgive our, my brothers Forgive the sisters Ya Allah please forgive them And wallah that's one of the greatest honors Let me share with you one hadith about this Inshallah A practice that we will take There's a lot of practices we will take One of them We will start sharing food All agreed? <laughs> we will start sharing food Inshallah Yes? Subhanallah <laughs> Right? Trust the Rasul the, the food that was made for one person Is enough for two Wallahi trust me Inshallah so that's what we will practice. Another thing you want to practice is this. Ali ibn Abi Talib in the hadith Sahih Mawquf. Ali ibn Abi Talib says, which he learned from the Prophet, whoever goes to visit a sick person, مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَعُودُ مَرِيضًا مُمْسِيًا During the night. إِلَّا خَرَجَ مَعَهُ As you're going to visit that sick person in Beaumont or uh, Henry Ford Hospital, in your way, 70,000 angels go along with you. Yastaghfiruna lah. Oh Allah, forgive him. Ya Allah, forgive him. Ya Allah, erase his sins. Ya Allah, elevate his status. Ya Allah, have mercy upon her. Ya Allah, bless her. Ya Allah, reward her. 70,000 angels dua on your road to this hospital. Allahu Akbar. Would you not visit? Would you not visit? So they make dua until when? For the trip? Oh, I wish they went, I wish they went to West Bloomfield. <laughs> It's only a five-minute moment is right here. La. They make dua hatta yusbih all night till the morning. Taba, I want to visit in the morning. And if you make that visit in the morning, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ali radiallahu anhu says, and if you go in the morning, 70,000 angels make dua for you. Oh Allah, forgive them all the way until the evening. Subhanallah. You see how beautiful? So now, next time you hear this, tanazzalul malaikatu. And not just Malaika. Who else? Jibreel this time. Jibreel says, Ameen to your da'a. Allah. You're good to go, inshallah. Right? Bi'idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibreel, I stand being around. May Allah allow you to feel their presence. 
May Allah allow you to sense their presence because it's possible, insha'Allah. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا Now, it gets much complicated, but it gets profound, where Allah says, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ They're not here just to pray for you. They're not here just to be means of having mercy upon you, but they're here for another mission. They're here for something very critical. What's that critical matter requires a break. About seven minutes, insha'Allah. Let's take a seven-minute break. Then we, ithnillah, resume our session, insha'Allah. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. All right, you guys ready, insha'Allah? Last part of our last session of uh, the series of Ramadan, insha'Allah. Bismillah. Oh, jazakumullahu khayran for the presentation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-qadr. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah. Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylat al-qadr. Laylat al-qadr khayrun min alf shahr. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا The angels and Jibreel, they descend now بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ They come down by the permission of Allah with every wisdom that is ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what does it mean بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ I'm going to take another ayah to help us. I will go to which surah? Ad-Dukhan. Remember three surahs, right? Baqarah, Ad-Dukhan, Qadr. I'll go to Ad-Dukhan to help me out. Allah says about Laylatul Qadr, Fiha Yufraqu, help me. Fiha Yufraqu, Kullu Amrin Hakim. Allah says on that night, every matter of wisdom is very much ordained. Excellent. طيب. What does that really mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels to note down all what will happen till the next Laylatul Qadr. Fair enough? So the angels are now given what will happen till the next Laylatul Qadr. And this is from the Mufassirin and the scholars. Let me give you the statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who is the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a scholar of the Qur'an. He says, يُكْتَبُ مِنْ أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ It will be taken from the uh, preserved tablet on the Laylatul Qadr and will be passed down to the angels. مَا يَكُونُ فِي السَّنَةِ What will be written? Min risk, provision, jobs. You'll get a job, you'll be laid off. You will lose, you will win. This trade will make money. This trade, you will lose money. Things like that. Aw mawtin aw haya. The angels now will have a list who will live and who will die in this year. Who will make it to the next little qadr, who will not. Hatta yuktab al hajj. Ibn Abbas says, even the one who's going to hajj, he says, this man, this woman will go to hajj. This sister will try, but her visa will be rejected. Subhanallah. Everything. He says, wa yahijju fulan. Then Ibn Abbas says, so much so, he said, he wants you to feel this ayah so much. He says, Ibn Abbas, after that night, you will see a man walking, you will see a woman walking. And his name is on the list of, list of dead people. They will not make it to the next Ramadan. You see them walking. And you're like, man, subhanAllah, only if you knew this man will not make it to the next little Qadr. Or that sister. May Allah protect us. So it's a very, very special night, very, very critical night. Now the question that comes here, do you have any say in what's written? What do you guys think? Can you influence? Can you edit? Huh? Go ahead, all the way in the back, all the way. Yes, yes? and yourself? Yeah. Yes, right? Taban, this is a very big question and you have to have a very strong reference. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the angels are getting this list and so on. Uh, the Prophet says, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء. Many of us heard this before and like, what does it mean? Nothing can change destiny except dua. What does that really mean? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that Allah may have destined that you go through, for example, a sickness. Okay? A, a sickness. Marad. But then you make dua to Allah. So you make dua to Allah, cure me, Ya Allah, bless my health. In general, Ya Allah, protect us. So your dua will go to Allah and what will come down? What's destined, what's coming down? The sickness. The sickness is coming because Allah destined it. But you made dua, oh Allah, keep me healthy. The Prophet, you know what did he say? He says, They wrestle. Your dua wrestles with the destiny. Until the day of judgment. So that sickness will not come your way. Subhanallah. So it's distant. Halas, kutib. 
Al-Marad, Kutub, Al-Maut, death, you're supposed to die. But you make dua, Ya Allah, bless my son, bless my daughter, bless my spouse, Ya Allah, long, long life, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. And death is coming, then it, 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 basically they wrestle with one another. Ila yawm al-qiyamah. Now what some people may say, well, I make a lot of dua, and man, I definitely am weak at wrestling. <laughs> Right? The destiny comes, knocks my dua down, and just hits me right on. No, that actually may not be true at all. Like, what do you mean? You know what happened to my son? My son got through a severe pain, and he uh, got sick, or he fell, and so on. And I was making dua, and I was in Mecca and Medina making dua. Oh, Allah, protect my family, protect my son, protect my daughter, all that stuff. And uh, what are you talking about? Your dua is what saved your son's life. He was destined to die in September. But your dua went and wrestled, and wrestled, and your dua beat what Allah has, or sent down to the angel of decree, subhanAllah. So don't think it doesn't work. Your sickness could have become worse, you could have had to go to the ER, but alhamdulillah, at least you're at home. Allahu Akbar, so all these things to truly appreciate. وَإِنَّ الْبَلَاءَ لَا يَنْزِلْ فَيَتَلَقَّاهُ الدُّعَاءَ فَيَعْتَلِجَانْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ all these things to truly, truly appreciate. May Allah bless you. And the Prophet tells you something very important all of us should know of this. Whenever you make dua to Allah, one of three things happen. You make dua to Allah. Give me an example of a dua. Help me. Any dua. Give me an example. Pass, uh, pass the finals. Okay. So, let, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, make me pass the finals. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, make dua. So, one of three things will happen. Either you will actually pass, or... Allah subhanahu assuming, assuming, by the way, I have a very important assumption, is that you're studying, right? So let's say you're studying very well, the exam comes, you may die, Allah make me pass. Either you will pass, or what will happen? You will not pass, so your die is meaningless. So you could have uh, failed in a, wor in a grade that is worse. No. What? It will protect you from something worse. Yeah, it will, it will protect you from something worse. So Allah will not accept the fact that you passed the exam, but Allah will protect you from an accident or something that would have happened that is bad had you passed. You see that? SubhanAllah. What's the third and last option? Let's say you make me pass the exam. You did not pass. It did not block a hardship. What's the third one? Munkin later. That's, that includes that. Excellent. The third one. Go ahead, Lamis. Excellent, excellent. I'll say what she said. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell her hasanat. So what did you say? <laughs> oh, hasanat, ahsanti, right? So the third option is that your dua will be transformed into good deeds on the scale where you need it the most. You're desperate. فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُولَتْ what? Mawazinu, right? The ones whose scale are very heavy. Imagine a dua that you always made, brother. Ya Rabbi, make me marry Jessica. لا الله. يا رب. And you're in grade nine, miskin. Okay, and you go to the uh, Fortson with your scooter. Ya Rab, make me marry Jessica. Okay. Tayyib, and la, anyway, so that never happened, never worked. Okay, and then what happened? All these years of suffering. All these years. Sah? What happened? Imagine you go Yom Al Qiyamah, and what saved you is you made dua to marry Jessica. <laughs> right? The good deeds are being placed. SubhanAllah. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. So the, exam, uh, uh, the example of the exam. Tab, which of the three is best? Whatever Allah sees best. Whatever Allah sees best is whatever is best for you. Now, one of the very nice statements says, في ليلة القدر يكتب أجلك. On the night of Qadr, your lifespan is written, like whether you will live another year or not. Your rizq is written. Everything is written. So do what Allah loves, so He can give you what you love and more. So do what Allah loves, so Allah can give you what you love and more. So may Allah allow us to be able to do that. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The last ayah, our Qarit, he, he, he read very nicely. Did you guys notice how he read the last verse? Anybody noticed? He read it, not the, in the usual. Anybody noticed? Help me. Go ahead. Excellent. May Allah grant you salam in your life, Ya Rabbi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr, by the permission of their Lord for, to every decreed matter. Then he said, Salam. So, Salam is the next ayah. So, usually, how do you read it? I just can explain. Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. What did he say? 
تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام. What meaning does this bring? Oof. He said this. I'm like Allah Akbar. It's in my notes, but I knew that's يعني, the meaning. But I never knew it can be read in a way that you understand it like that. Allah Akbar. That's why when you're when you're excellent in Quran, you can make the people know the meaning just from the way you're reciting. Allahu Akbar. There's an art in Quran called the art of uh, stops. Where do you stop? Subhanallah. When Allah, when بإذن ربهم من كل أمر so Allah every decreed matter, then Allah says salam. Brothers, help me. Take a shot. عشاني بس say say something wrong. خلاص. Excellent. May Allah grant you peace. Nothing is written for the believers except that it's peaceful to you. Nothing Allah qaddaru lak illa khair. And the Prophet said that, and we all know that. Nothing is written for the believer except good. عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ So don't be too nervous about what Allah has written for you and know that Allah loves the believers. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْتَوَّابِينَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الَّذِينَ يُقَادِرُونَ فِي سَبِيلِهِ صَفَّا كَأَنَّهُمْ بُنِيَانٌ مَرْصُوصٌ All these groups Allah loves. The righteous, the truthful, those who rely on Allah, those who repent, those who are clean, those who are pure. Allah loves them. So don't think Allah ever destined something for you except that He loves you and is good for you. Salam. طيب. Last ayah. Salamun hiya. Very nice way of Allah saying it. Salamun hiya. Peaceful it is. How do you guys say it? English teachers, how is it usually said? It is peaceful. صح? You usually say it is peaceful. How did Allah say it? Peaceful it is. Not it's because Arabic is opposite. No. Because even in Arabic you say hiya salam. But Allah says salamun hiya. The scholars say this is something that Allah wants to hasten the good news to you. At-ta'jil the surur Allah wants you to become excited. Because if Allah says hiya, you're like hiya, it is, it is what, it is what, it is what? Salam. Oh, okay. But Allah gives you so much peace, you don't need to be stressed out, not even for a moment. Salamun hiya. May Allah make your life all salam. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Salamun hiya. Some people are experts at making people nervous, right? He, oh, oh, if you know what happened. And like, what happened? I don't know if I should tell you now. Let's wait for others to come. What's going on? I just passed my exam. Ah, ya khay, haram alik. Haram alik. Haram. Why you do this to me, right? So I passed the exam, and people may Allah protect us. Salam on here. So Allah says, Salam on here. Why is it salam? The kathra al khayri fiha is filled with greatness. Hatta matla al fajr. Until when? Until the break of dawn, or until fajr time. What do you benefit from knowing حتى مطلع الفجر? So the moment Maghrib comes in, it might be tonight, it might be tomorrow, Allah alam. Until Fajr, what do you benefit from that? حتى مطلع الفجر. Okay, what benefit? Go ahead. Excellent. You know when your deadline, right? How long is this night going for? So one of the things to benefit is having deadlines. That's one of the ways to organize your schedule is to have deadlines. Excellent. Very good point. حتى مطلع الفجر. What does it also mean? Go ahead. Excellent. أحسنت. It's peaceful until, all, until the last second. So if Allah tells you it's all the way until the last second for fajr, then you should strive to not waste a single second. Not waste a single second. I want to share with you something. Is dua in Ramadan accepted? Is a dua accepted in the day? Is dua accepted throughout the entire day? So I have a question for you. you, you we fast from about 5, 10 a.m. roughly until 8, what? 8.20. 8.20, okay. Okay, about 8.20 p.m. You can make dua throughout the whole time. When is dua accepted the most? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah, what did you say? As, you, as the closer you get to Maghrib, the more powerful it is. You have proof? That's what, maybe you heard it somewhere, maybe your parents, and that's true because Rasulullah says that the dua of the one who breaks his fast is never rejected. When you break your fast, what are you trying to say? 
Angels descend when? When do they start coming down? Angels. Little Qadr, ya Little Qadr. When do angels start coming down? Go ahead. Ahsant. May Allah bless you. When does Jibreel start coming down? Many people do not realize someone else descends, but not at Maghrib. Allah Jalla Jalalu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the last third of the night and in Sahih Muslim after the first third of the night. So you go from Maghrib to Fajr. How many hours is that? Let's say Maghrib is what time roughly? It's at 8.20. Fajr is what time? Let's say 5.20. So 9.20, 10, 20, 11, 20, 12, 20, 1, 20, 2, 20, 3, 20, 4, 20, 5, 20. So nine hours. One third of the night means every how many hours? Three. So after three hours from 8.20 in Sahih Muslim, Allah descends in a way that befits His Majesty. What witness do you want after that? Right? And does Allah say something? Does, is there anything about that? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by saying, Ana al-Malik, Ana al-Malik. I am the king, I am the king. May Allah allow us to respect that. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah says, Ana al-Malik, Ana al-Malik. Then He says, Man dhal ladhi yas'aluni fa'atiyah. Who has any dua, anything that they wish for so I can give it to them? Man dhal ladhi yad'uni fa'astajibu lah. Whoever wants to call me so I can answer. Man dhal ladhi yastaghfiruni fa'aghfiru lah. Who has any sin they've ever done throughout their entire life? That they can ask me to forgive and I will forgive. The Prophet says, Allah will do that. لَهُ فَلَا يَزَالُ كَذَلِكْ حَتَّى يُضِيءَ الْفَجْرِ Until Fajr. So Allah doesn't come at the earlier part of the night. Allah comes at the later part of the night. حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ So you see now, for this hadith by the way, Allah descends every single night in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. But why I emphasizing it? Because many people forget that Allah does that even in Ramadan. So it's a night, not a joke. This is very, very serious. May Allah protect you. May Allah allow you to stand up in this night. Amir Rabbil Alameen. But I have a question. We have a few minutes, about 21 minutes left. We have a quick question. When is Laytul Qadr? Oh, here we go again. No one knows, brother. Stop, just go right to it. La. No, there's a, there's a point. You know when is it? Go ahead. Ah, thank you. Excellent. 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 Takbir. <laughs> and all the information I told you, you never clapped. <laughs> all the information. You probably heard more about Little Qadr today than you've ever did in your life. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. Allah is excellent. You know what was so impressive? She did it backwards. <laughs> right? May Allah bless you. Ahsanti. So I want to share with you a few things, inshallah, so cool. Okay, it might be the first time that you hear it, but I'm going to try my best to organize it well for you. Laytul Qadr, some may believe it's gone. It doesn't happen. It happened once and never comes back again. Huh? Yes. Okay? The majority of opinion is it happens once every year. So now we have how many days in the year? How many days? Sarah, Sarah. 300 what? 365. 365. Any, uh, any other days? 365. What do you guys think? Go ahead. 366, 366 depending. Sah? February 29 or 28? Sah? Or 365.25. Uh, 365.25. What's the mistake we're doing? Go ahead. That's not the Islamic calendar. Ahsanti. Three? Ahsanti. That's the least it can be. And the most? 355. Ahsanti. So there's 355 days in the year. In the Hijri calendar, 355. So now, Laytul Qadr is one of 355. So far, so good. And that's actually not my sentence. This is the sentence, authentic narration of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. Ibn Mas'ud, look what he says. He says, من يقوم, من يقوم الحول يصب Laytul Qadr. If you stand up all night 355, you will definitely catch Laytul Qadr. <laughs> definitely. Okay. Now, I want to, 355, I'll make it smaller. Anybody can help me make it smaller? And it, all 12 months, make it small, make it, help me, help me in one month. One month. Ramadan. Why you say that? Everything has to have proof. Kullu dalil. Lazim dalil. 
How do you know it's in Ramadan? Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al-Quran. So Jazallah khair, Brother Majid, we narrowed it from 355 to what? To 30 or to one month. Tayyip. Narrow it more for me. Yalla, bismillah. Kullu dalil. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ahsant. Very smart way of answering the question. May Allah protect you, Habib. Ahsant. Allah yabarik fiqh. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he teaches us, تَحَرَّوا لَيْلَ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ So he says, focus and search, seek Layl al-Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So we're at 355, been easier, 30, now it's what? 10. Can you make it less? Go ahead, Amjad. Five. Ahsan. Odd nights, we're coming to that. Ahsan. Actually, let's take, the, let's take both. Odd nights. If we say odd nights, well, let's, before the odd nights, let's do uh, the one before that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu and I want you to appreciate this hadith Rajulani min ashab nabi two companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they saw in a dream Layl al-Qadr and it was one of the last seven nights one of the last seven nights was their dream so when they woke up who did he go to? the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Ya Rasulullah, I had a dream that Layl al-Qadr was one of the last seven nights the Prophet says Yes, your dream is true. Yes, so whoever wants to search for Little Qadr is one of the last seven nights. Allahu Akbar, 355, 30, 10, 7, 7, then let's take your witter. What's the odd? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, تَحَرَّوا لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْوِتْرِ مِنْ الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ Seek Laylat al-Qadr in the odd nights, what she told us. The odd nights of Laylat al-Qadr. So the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th. So now we have five nights. Allahu Akbar, five nights. Is there something that makes it reduced more? Yes, one narration. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, in the long hadith, I'll share the hadith later in, the, in detail. But for the sake of our point, can we reduce it more than five? Yes. He says, فَالْتَمِسُوهَا فِي التَّاسِعَةِ وَالسَّابِعَةِ وَالْخَامِسَةِ One of the meanings, فيها كذا معنا. One of the meanings, he says, Seek the Qadr on the 29th, 27th, and 25th. You have three nights. Do we have a hadith that reduces it more? We do. We do. We do. سألت أبي بن كعب. One man asked a companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, and he told him to obey. Your brother Ibn Mas'ud said, whoever stands up at night all year 355, they will definitely get Laylatul Qadr. So Ubay ibn Kaab, what is he very famous for? Ubay ibn Kaab, معروف بإيش? Uh, probably, I'm not sure about probably, I'm not, I'm not sure, but good point, good. Ubay ibn Ka'ab ma'roof with what? Who said that? Allah yaj'alak min ahl al-Qur'an. He's very famous that he's a Qur'an guy. Right, or even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to the, pro he, uh, the Prophet, went to Ubay, he says, Ya Ubay, Allah told me to read Qur'an to you. So Ubay is like, Allah mentioned me by name, like Allah told you, Ubay, asammani rabbi? He said, yes. And then Ubay started crying, like Allah, like, but why was Ubay like that? Because he was a person of Quran. So Ubay ibn Ka'ab, he said, Ibn Mas'ud, my brother, said that. Why? Because people do not rely on one or two nights or five nights. You know what I mean? He says, Ibn Mas'ud said, just get up all night, all year. Just no know people can rely. I'll just study chapter 7. I know it's only chapter 7, right? No, study chapter 1 to 10. Stop doing that. Don't just focus on chapter 7 or 8. But then he said, Ubay, he says, First of all, Ibn Mas'ud knows it's not one of the three, 355. He knows it's in Ramadan. And he knows, and he knows, Ibn Mas'ud, it's one of the last 10 nights. And he knows that it's on the 27th. This is every hadith I mentioned is authentic. كله صحيح. وَأَنَّهَا لَيْنَةُ سَبْعٍ وَعِشْرِينَ ثُمَّ حَلَفْ وَاللَّهِ It's the 27th. Then he says, Ya Abu al-Mundhir, why do you say that? He said, because the Prophet told us of a sign that takes place the next day. And we saw that sign taking place after the 27th. So when is Laylatul Qadr, 27th? If it's that authentic and it's that clear, then how come every Facebook post to Instagram or Khutbah Jum'ah, no one knows, it's one of the last, why do we do that? 
Why? Go ahead. Okay, because we can treat all knights the, the, the same. Excellent. But still, why would we not say to the world, it's 27th? And I'm taking my time, inshallah, but it seals the deal for many of us. Anyone else? Go ahead, Amjad. Oh, I'll tell you what Amjad said, but give me a moment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now forget everything I said. Not forget, like ignore, but as in like, I'm going to tell you something else. Ready? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ra'aytuni, I saw, it was revealed to me that I, on the day of Al-Qadr, not the night, Sabihat Al-Qadr, I am prostrating on a place there is mud and water. Ma' watin. Okay? I'm making sujood. And what am I making sujood on? What's on the ground? Mud. Mud and water. So then he says, just make sure you guys seek it every odd night of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. That's it. Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu, he said, fa mutirat. All of a sudden, there's not rain, يعني, but there's rain starting to come down. Min tilka layla, that night. Wa kan al masjid ala arish. Like the masjid, the roof was the palm trees, uh, leaves. So it's not like an actual concrete or whatever. Like water can seep through. So he said, So basically the water came in. He said, I saw, I saw with my own eyes the Prophet وسلم, forehead and nose muddy. You see that? He said, oh my God, the dream is that I had mud on my forehead. No, so I, was, I, said, I saw, I saw, it was that one night. What night was it? 21st. Which was a few days ago. So is it 20? Obey Wallahi. <laughs> right? What is it? I have one more. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you two more. Two more. خلاص? One of the Sahaba, he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, I live in the desert. I live far away. I'm in the suburbs. I don't live in Medina. I'm where? The desert. Be'id, far away in the desert. Okay? وَأَنَا أُصَلِّ فِيهَا And I have a place, like a musalla. I pray, alhamdulillah, everything. He says, bihamdillah. فَمُرْنِي بِلَيْلَ Tell me one night where I can come إِلَى هَذَا الْمَسْجِدِ What's this masjid? What does he mean come to this masjid? Help me. Medina. The masjid in Nabawi. So I live very far away. Tell me which night I can come to Medina and pray in your masjid. So obviously what is he asking for? It's Al-Qadr. Right? Because I pray, let's say you want to pray behind Sheikh Muhammad in Masjid in West Bloomfield. Which night should I go? You'll be given the best night. In a way, right? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Come to this masjid, Laylat Thalath wa Ashreen. Come on the night of the 23rd. So the son of this man who asked the question, Wa ma fa'al abuk? So he said, Okay, what did your dad do when the Prophet told him this? He said, Wallahi, that day, the 23rd, the night, he comes to this masjid, he stays all the way till the morning. Then he grabs his dab, his animal, then he goes back to the desert. So is it 23rd? Last one. I said two, last one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iltamisuha ya'ni al qadr In the nine remaining nights, or the seven remaining nights, or the five remaining nights, or the three remaining nights, or the last night, which can mean it's on whatever it is. It can be the 30th. Tayyib brother, now you confused the life out. And, and I wish I never heard what you said in a way, right? Astaghfirullah, <laughs> don't say that. That's why many scholars have came to the conclusion that the only way to make sense out of all these ahadith is that Laylatul Qadr changes from year to the year. That's the only way to make sense. Right? We respect whoever says 27th, we respect whoever says 25th, we respect whoever says whatever they say. As long as Quran and Sunnah, right? But this comes to show you as some of the Mashaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he says that. Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, he says that. Tantaqil. But the bottom line is what? What do you think? All is common. So now we go to the, uh, what? the uh, largest common denominator. We do that in math, right? So what's the largest common denominator out of all opinions? What's the common thing you noticed out of all of them? Excellent. May Allah grant you Jannah. Ya Rab. It's not the odd nights. That's not the common. Because he said, Aw akhiri layla. It can be the 30th. Right? So the common denominator is it's one of the last 10 nights. For sure, inshallah. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has done. Focusing very much. 
Is there a... Tayyib, your brother, I have a question. Did the Prophet not know when Laylatul Qadr? Did he know exactly when was it? He knew exactly when was it. Tab, we don't have a hadith. La. Tab, why? I'll tell you why. In an authentic hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received revelation, Ya Muhammad, Laylatul Qadr is on such and such day or night. So he said, فَخَرَجْتُ I came out to tell the world Laylatul Qadr is on the specific night. He said, فَوَجَدْتُ رَجْ فُلَانُ وَفُلَانُ يت... إيش... يعني They were fighting one another. They were fighting and arguing. So the Prophet said, فَرُفِعَتْ So there's a fight that broke between two people that stopped the Prophet from announcing. So imagine like I'm talking and someone starts yelling. So I stopped my lecture because someone is yelling. What many times the speaker does? Hey, where was I? What was I saying? Right? I was giving a talk and someone said, Brother Majid. I'm like, yes. Uh, what time is it? It's uh, 4.57. Okay, back to the lecture. What was I saying? That's what kind of went to the Prophet ﷺ. He knew the date, saw two people, may Allah forgive them, fighting. So, rufi'at, it was taken. It ascended, not descended, it ascended. Subhanallah, there's a lot that can be said, but this comes to show you how barakah is taken when there's fighting among the believers. Especially when there's unjustifiable reasons, صح? for reasons that are silly. Some fights have to take place. Some fights have to take place. But many fights, most fights do not have to take place. So this, these nights are nights that you pass. You know, you guys ever go on YouTube? What, what happens on YouTube when you watch a video? For those that don't have YouTube Premium, there's ads. So what do you have to do? Skip ad. So last 10 nights of Ramadan, keep skipping ads. Someone says, oh, the food is cold. cold. Skip ad. <laughs> Don't address it, move on. Oh my God, leftovers again, skip ads. Don't address it. Don't pay attention. It's not worth having a fight. There's a qadr is on the way, inshallah, right? So this is something to truly appreciate. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says something very, very nice. You know what he says? Asa an yakuna khayran lakum. He says there's also good in that, inshallah. There's good in what knowing Laylatul Qadr is one of the last 10 nights and not exactly when is it. And as we are approaching the last, uh, inshallah, uh, part of this session, what are some signs of Laylatul Qadr? There are three known authentic signs. How many? Three known authentic signs. Two during the night and one during the day. So I won't take inshallah answers now because of the sake of time. Fair enough? The two during the night, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in the first hadith, ayyukum yathkur, he's telling the Sahaba, who remembers the time when the moon looked like half a plate. Shiqi jafna, zay nusuf sahin. Who remembers when the moon looked like half a plate? This was a sign that it was Laylatul Qadr. When the moon looks like half a plate. Last night it looked a lot like half a plate. Big time. It was one of the most times I ever noticed it. Right? But does that mean it was Laylatul Qadr? Allahu Ta'ala Alam. So if it's not there, Allah, no one is going to open their mouth and claim something for sure of what ye, what, this year that we live in. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not tell us that it's every year the same date. So we pass on that as well. So the moon looks like what? Half a? a half a plate. The second sign is the atmosphere. Al-Jaw. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Laylatul Qadr Laylatun Samiha, it's a very calm night, very full of serenity. Tuma'nina. Taliqa, peaceful. La haratun wa la barida. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. How is the weather in this hall right now? It's very hot. I know you guys are sweating, right? Doing this and stuff like that. Laylatul Qadr is a very beautiful weather. So the weather is beautiful. Okay? Taban, if it was cold, if it was very hot, it doesn't mean it's not Laylatul Qadr. But these are just some signs for you to appreciate we said there's three signs the last sign is the sunrise and this is the sign obey relied on remember obey said wallahi is the 27th he said why because i saw the sign the next day that's the sign which is the sun rises in a way that you can stare at it make it simple the sun rises in a way that it looks like it's a moon so there's light, but it doesn't hurt the eyes, and there's no rays. لا شعاع لها. طيب. إحنا very much done. But how dare I? How can I finish? How can you have a lecture about Laylatul Qadr? 
How can you spend from 3 to 5 p.m. talking about Laylatul Qadr and not talk about the following? What's that following? What is it that I did not speak about? What is something so important? Yeah, brother. Go ahead. Oh, the six days of Shawwal. Excellent. Very good point. After Ramadan, Shawwal, you fast six days. It's like the reward of the year. But something more important, Laylatul Qadr, all the way in the back. Wait, what did he say? I forgot. Oh, subhanAllah. Rufiat. <laughs> right? Okay, go ahead. All the way in there. Oh, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. What do we do? What do we do? Huh? Dua, right? Excellent, excellent. I want more. Squeeze. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. We spent two hours almost. Out of everything that you've heard, the night worse than a thousand months, more. The night the angel and the Jibreel descends, more. The night of Mubarakah, more. The night of peace, more. The night of Qadr is written. All of this Aisha goes to the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, if I feel it's Laylatul Qadr. So that means you can feel it. In Alim too, if I knew tonight is Laylatul Qadr, may Allah make us feel it, Ya Rab. If I knew, what should I say? On this night, he said the following. The Aisha, the following, three parts. Allahumma innaka afu. Oh Allah, you, love, you, you are forgiving. You, oh Allah, you are forgiving. To hibbul afwa, you will love to forgive. Fa'fu anni, so please forgive me. This can go into a lot of detail. This dua is powerful. This dua changes your past and your future. Please, undivided attention. Be patient with me. Right? Because we gave you an Eid announcement, took about three minutes. You have to give me three minutes, inshallah. La, be patient. Allahumma innaka afu. Oh Allah, you're afu. Allah, the Prophet could have said, Allahumma innaka ghafur, tuhibbu al-maghfira, faghfir li. No, it's afu. Why? Because afu has two meanings. Maghfira is different. Maghfira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment, pay attention, he brings the believer, yudni al-mu'min ila Allah. May Allah make this day easy for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to that mu'min, to that believing man or woman, Allah says, Atadhkuru dhamba kada, do you remember such and such sin? Atadhkuru dhamba kada, and the person says, Yes, I remember. Yeah, I messed up that day. Yeah, I remember. So that person feels that I am destroyed. Allah says, Inni satartuha alayka fi dunya. In the dunya, I have concealed you. Wal yawm, aghfiruha lak. Na'afu. But today, I forgive you. Maghfira, na'afu. So what's the difference? Is Allah, Allah going to punish that person? Is Allah going to punish that person? No. Allah says, I have maghfirah. Afu, why is it different? Afu is erasing. So maghfirah, in a way, it's like a car pulling you over. Hey, get a registration and license, please. Okay. All right, here you go. I'm going to go see my records. If I see that you uh, cut a stop sign, then I won't give you a pass today, right? So the officer goes back to your records, sees that you caught a stop sign. Will he hold you accountable for the stop sign again? No, because it's already built, held accountable. As an example, what's my pain point is that it's in the records of the officer. Triple A will not take it off until five, ten years later, right? Allah is the best example. Zafu is erasing. So this means when you go Yom Al Qiyamah, you won't even remember it. And Allah will not even bring it up again. And you will not be nervous. And you will not be stressed or anxious regarding any sin that you've done in your life because Allah Afa, Afa erased, completely erased. It's not in the records no more. Allahu Akbar. But that was the past. This dua shapes your future. How? Afu has another meaning, which is known as ziyada, excess, extra. So Afu means to erase and means excess, to ease. It means what? Erase and excess or extra. Erase and Excess or extra? Don't forget, two E's. How did you get that from? Allah says in the Quran, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ They ask you, O oh Muhammad, what should they what, give? قُلْ Tell them, give. قُلِ الْعَفُو Tell them to give what's extra. Allahu Akbar. What does this have to do with عَفُو? The extra here is, Oh Allah, have afu, forgive everything I've done in my past. Don't make me remember it. I don't want to face you with it, even though you'll forgive me, I know, but don't bring it up. 
I don't want to remember. I don't want to see no consequences of it. Emotional, physical, f physical, no consequences. And I want extra. Zaziyada here means, Ya Allah afoon, tuhibu al-afa fa'fu anni means, Oh Allah, give me everything I asked for. And more. What's the more? Everything Allah sees best for you. That's a ziyada. Wa ziyada. And give me everything I want and more, which is everything Allah sees best for you. Allahumma innaka afoon. تحب العفو فاعف عني. Live it, feel it. This dua shapes your entire future. One dua can do this adjustment, this change. That's what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said to the Sahaba. So I end with this. اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا. May Allah forgive us all. جزاكم الله خيرا. May Allah bless you. It has been a wonderful series. I learned so much. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward you for your patience. May Allah reward you for every sweat <laughs> that you're going through. I feel you, right? Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless every mom and dad. Please, for every mom and dad, round of applause. <laughs> right? Jazakumullah khair for Ala, for the ICD, for the board members, for all of you. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan. Allah bless you.